Because your magic, your magic people to me, your magic people to me. Hold your head up high, let your voices fly. I'm proud to be Māori. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back uh, to the podcast. Um, just having to catch up with one of my bros, my best mate, Tihonu Tune, and I just gave him an impromptu invitation, invitation to see if he was keen to have a podcast because he's been up to a lot of things, I've been up to a lot of things, and he was actually my first ever podcast attempt, uh, would have been back in 2018. And so, Takuhua, very uh, happy that you're keen uh, to take this up and happy as to be catching up with you. Yeah, no, nah, thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody, for having me. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, it's been bloody ages, you know, what's it, three years now? 18, 19, 20, 21, yeah. It's been ages and it, it, it's almost as though... Because I remember when we first started out, we were just sort of like glued together in terms mm. of our journey of Hard out. of growth, of developing. We went through so much things together, the seminars, the wānanga, and pretty much every step of the way, whenever we had a new idea, you know, we were always together during mm. those sort of like ideas, dreams, aspirations. And so, you know, in that three-year period, you know, we've been doing our mahi, we've been trying to work on bringing those things to life. And so... You know, it's cool to sort of like be in this space and have that sort of full circle or rear view sort of like vision of, of what's been going on. But um, just reintroduce yourself perhaps, you know, for, for those people who are new to the podcast and new to the space, you know, just share a little bit about uh, who you are and, and a little bit of your mahi. Yeah. Um, kia ora everybody. Um, ngai tūhoi. And I've also got connections to Whanapuni, so... Just because I'm wearing a fun t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm a Māori artist from Waimana and Ruatoki here in the Bay Pliny. From Waimana on my dad's side, from Ruatoki on my mum's side. Super proud to be Tuhoi. Um, and been doing art my whole life. It's like my whole creative journey has been up until like adulthood. Pretty much it was pretty smooth as smooth as things could go and then getting to adulthood actually coming across creative challenges you know sort of started this journey that we're on and then I remember getting to a point where I was like oh man is this what it's like for things not to always work out (laughs) (laughs) you know like um, one of the lessons that I've learned Lately, not learnt, but relearnt from um, Naval, who's one of the goats. If you fellas haven't heard of him, N A V A L, go look him up. It. He's the only person I follow on Twitter who literally drops bombs every single tweet. And he said this cool thing that just made all the sense in the world to me, and it was um, that we are not meant to be. Oh, this is if you. This is if it aligns with you. It aligns with me, and it's we are not meant to specifying one thing and we're meant to do a lot of different things and I remember like at points in my adulthood as a creative person where I thought like man like you know I like too many different things oh you know that's that was my mentality and thinking is this a good thing to always do square one square one you know for different creative endeavors to build in one area and then go oh no I want to try this thing build in the area try this thing instead of going far as in one thing and mm. I you know kind of dancing around with that in my mind and then I heard him say it and then Robert Kiyosaki said it and I was just like I oh, mean you know and it was reassurance yeah, hey? good reassurance you know because you and I both know that there's always those times where you feel like you're not doing what you think you should be doing or what you think you should be doing isn't what you thought you should be doing at that point, you know, and then you hear people that you respect and that you look up to reassure you from a distance and then you go, oh, yeah, you know, I I should have already known this thing, you know, but, um, yeah, so I'm a creative person and we went to high school together and, yeah, we were pretty much glued at the hip for (laughs) a good, 
a good probably two years, eh? When yeah. we both moved home. Yeah. From our... 2016, yeah, 2017, 2018. Where we were together more than like our partners, pretty much. Basically, yeah. you know. <laughs> and it's quite a... I like what you sort of said about, you know, how we have this idea that we need to just do one thing and do it really well. And, you know, for some people, that, that works extremely well, you know. But then there's... A bunch of people who who are just curious, I believe, you know, just very curious on on what it is that we need to do, and we don't know for sure if we're just sticking to one thing unless we know that, you know, like now nah, this is what I'm actually meant to be doing. But I think we are so diverse in either the way that we think or or we sort of like always evolve, you know, from year to year, moment mm. to moment, and I think. That just comes, you know, with a lot more curiosity. And I know that for sure in my journey, you know, as I start to in, endeavor on, on a particular pathway, I grow and then it's not that I outgrow it. It's just I have another expression that I want to mm. sort of like do. And um, it's just about exploring what that looks like. Yep. And, you know, sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't, but I never, ever regret trying something new. And so, you know, I think that'll be an awesome thing for you to touch on hey you know you coming into the space of of wanting to deviate from you know either being that renowned tattoo artist or you know doing um that mahi in, in the art world to then mm. just changing straight into wanting to do filming you know mm. and you've spoken about it on your podcast then which is awesome fun if you're creative and you want to sort of like learn more around the arts and just how to be a creative thinker um, you know, would you like to touch on that about that yeah. transition period? Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, for, from a young age, it was my dad. He exposed me to heaps of different forms of art, fantasy art, um, airbrushing, you know, drawing, painting, carving, tattooing, everything. And, you know, so my view on the world was it's – and on the creative world is it's vast mm. and that was the main reason I went to uni or to Wintech uh, was to just see what else there was out there and then um, you know I realise now that I'm a person like creative person through and through you know I'm not a painter or I'm not a moko artist I'm not a portrait artist I'm a creative person and I love exactly what you said you know I love all expressions of that you know and for me like it, it takes me back to being a kid mm. you know doing another expression of art because as a kid everything was new you know I remember doing my first painting and it was wrong because I used watercolor and with watercolor you're supposed to have diluted with water and I used it straight out the tube <laughs> like an oil painting it ended up being like an oil painting but you know and um, there are times when I have to remind myself to just just you know live a creative life you know although sometimes it's not um, financially viable mm. <laughs> but with the life that the lifestyle that we live um, you know my darling and I I, there's still heaps of space and heaps of time to be creative and we were talking about it before before the podcast was um you know being reinvigorated again mm -hmm. um with their creativity and my and then thinking about my dream life which i did a podcast on might be two years ago now 2019 i think and i said my dream life was to have all the resources and connections to be able to create whatever i think of you know and you know to some degree that's i can do that now if mm. i want to you know and it's it's cool to think about and cool to be able to pretty much in a nutshell just want to make cool stuff yeah. you know and, and not that, closing yourself yeah, off eh? exactly yeah. not just saying oh i'm I'm only this kind of artist. Mm. I don't, I don't or do I need to thing. stop this to do that. Yeah, yeah, you can you do know? all of them. You can do at all the same of time. it. You know, and I know that was sort of like a mentality of you is you wanted to stop something in order to do the mm. other thing. Mm. And I think the full circle moment for you now is like you've found a way to manage everything. Yeah. You know, and just to be able to express, and it's just awesome to sort of like see you thriving. 
um, doing what you love. And do you feel that there was a part of it? Do you feel that there was a pull in terms of, you know, you wanting to do something? Um, and did that make you not enjoy what you were doing? Like, yeah. was that part of, yeah. like, the reason why you had that um, it's part in your journey? Yeah. And we had a conversation about it last year. Mm. We were on the phone. Yeah. Remember? And um, it was the realization that I had, which was not wanting to box myself in. And then you told me, you're like, yeah, that I've noticed that, you know, with you as your, uh, you know, sort of limitless creative. I don't know if that's exactly what you said, but mm. pretty much something like that. Mm. And I was like, hey, yes, you know, <laughs> like I realized that whenever I have um, parameters and boundaries, it stunts my creativity. And I, I like, like, I like having criteria and things for certain things, you know, having a direction to go. But I like to be able to imagine boundlessly and then pick all the cool stuff and all of that, you know, imagination playground and then go, oh, let me put all that together, you mm-hmm. know, see what happens with that. If that doesn't work, put all that together. But, I, you know, I don't like having limited, a limited pool to choose from, mm-hmm. you know, and um, realizing that I was just like, far out, mean, you know, because yeah. it, it was cool to find out what it was Mm. because i remember before that you know like you were saying stopping one thing to do another creative thing i felt like a step in the right direction but it didn't feel like it yeah you know it still felt like oh there's still something else i'm missing i don't know what it is you know it doesn't just feel like me you know i didn't feel 100 percent like myself yeah you know and that was um like with the podcast you know, just restricting it to just creative people, but opening it up to um, not just creativity in the traditional sense that we think of, like visual arts, music, you know, all of those things, but also creative thinking, you know, around business and other things. And just really things that I know feed my creativity. Mm. And that's probably one of the things that I learned not explicitly from my dad but just from like growing up and and making sense out of the things that he's taught me is um being able to draw inspiration from anywhere and being able to let anything inspire your creativity wow you know to now where it's like i don't consciously think about things that i get inspiration from right you just look at something and and how can that thing inspire me or what is it about this that inspires me exactly it could be the randomest things it could be literally something that someone says Mm. and like another thing that i find beautiful is um words that are woven together beautifully Mm. you know when someone just says something succinctly and they say something that's why you probably like navale yeah they say something with five words that a normal person or an average person would have taken 20 words to say. Yeah. And I'm just like, there's no no more perfect way to say that thing than they just said it. You know, and those sort of things inspire me because it makes me think about my creativity. I'm like, oh, what areas could I be more efficient at but not sacrifice quality, not sacrifice depth of meaning, mm. you know, and not just to be like an efficient artist but just because it's a cool challenge for me, you know. Mm. Either way, like, because a normal, like, I wouldn't say a normal person, but people might not necessarily notice it. No. But in terms of for you, you particularly doing that work, it's inspiring you in that yeah. regard. And so it's you filling up your own cup and your own creativity. And, you know, I think i got to do a big mihi for you as well, because there was so much in me that didn't really give myself the the um, knowing that I was a creative person. Mm. Like, I didn't ever put myself in the category of being a creative yeah you know and it's only been in the recent years where i've started to feel like hey look i am pretty creative yeah, man. you know being able to think of something creating it and bringing it to life yeah. and i remember what you said um you told me that man what you've created never existed in life before you know and when i when that sort of like dropped for me i was like far out it was like a very powerful sort of emotion that i experienced for the first time Mm. you know something that never existed is now here because of me and 
you know, not seeing it in that ego sense, but it was just the realization that, wow, there's, there is a lot more creativity outside of just being an artist in terms of drawing, singing, because yeah. I'm rubbish at both. <laughs> I was like, I'm terrible at this. I'm not a creative. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's just, um, and I feel that just talks to the friendship that we have too, mm. you know, how um, there was a point where, you know, you did say you're just closing off the podcast to, to just creative people and then you had a conversation with me around, man, I'd love for me to come onto mm. your podcast. And I was like, you know, that, goes to show the sense of where you do draw inspiration from because yeah. every time we get together it's just always just fire you know yeah. like we have to schedule out like a couple of hours to have a proper catch-up and it's still like that and yeah. so you know as we're sort of like talking about creativity and and arts um do you want to talk about you know your experience down in wellington yeah yeah so um first off just from what you've said i hope that everybody listening you've had a realization that creativity isn't what you traditionally think it is. It's more important. And I've said this heaps of times, um, more important is creative thinking Mm. and, um, creative thinking can apply to everything and anything and it's fun. But yeah, Yeah. so that was that. Uh, but yeah, in Wellington, so I entered a portrait competition, the Kingi Tuheitia Portraiture Award, which was curated and run by, uh, New Zealand Portrait Gallery, which is in Wellington. And the whole criteria for the show was you had to be an emerging artist. There was all this criteria in there because I wasn't sure if I was I fitted in that category, but I did. Um, and you had to do a portrait of your tipuna, somebody who you fuck up up to, and you had to say how you fuck up up to them as well. So it couldn't be just, you know, a, a cool photo of a, a Maori kuya or kroa. Mm-hmm. You know, it had to be actually somebody that you um relate to. And that was you know, and the whole co papa behind this portrait award was to celebrate your fuck up papa really. And it was, you know, cool, mean ass. And then also there was no um criteria on what you created. You could literally create anything you wanted. It could be spoken word could be written poetry, could be paintings, drawings, you name it. Um, and the top 50, I think there are about 120-something entrants. Not many. Mm-hmm. I thought there were going to be way more than that. But um, they chose the top 50 to be in the show, which was in Wellington last week. Uh, the 27th was the opening ceremony for it. Uh, and, um, yeah, we went down there. And the the king was there with um, all of his entourage. Uh, the judges were there. Um, Sir Derek Lardelli, who's the goat, he was uh, one of the judges and he was there and a bunch of other people too, Farno and friends and stuff like that. And they um, yeah, had this big ceremony, which was choice. I ended up coming runner-up, um, which I'm stoked about, but you know... Um, you always enter, for me anyway, you know, you always enter a competition, put your best foot forward and... Hope for the best. You know, you always aim for the top spot. Because why wouldn't you if you're going to enter exactly. a, you know, enter a competition? And this is not about being arrogant or about ego or anything, but it's really about trying to bring out your best. And um, yeah, so you got runner-up, which is cool. For me, um, one of the best things about it was being able to have my piece displayed so people could see it and it's one of the few pieces that i've done um that one turned out how i had hoped wow and i've only done literally about handful less than five wow i reckon maybe five in my whole life pieces that have turned out how i wanted them there's always have to be compromises um so yeah that's one cool thing about this piece and then the second one was you have to see it in real life to experience it as opposed to just seeing it on your phone or on a computer or something uh so i ended up doing a digital drawing in procreate which is an app on my ipad and it, i animated it so it, it's a piece of my tipuna uh tamaro wayari who's my great 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 grandfather on my mum's side and um 
he's got stars behind him that twinkle. And there was there were heaps of things I wanted I said with the piece. Like um it was a it was an homage to our Tipuna and how they were innovators and how they or I like to believe anyway from stories that we've heard about them, that they didn't just accept the status quo, you know, they always try to grow and thrive as opposed to survive, which is mm. a throwback to an older podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a, a few ways that I did there was um, through combining contrasting styles. So a pencil drawing that's done digitally, um, even different animation styles. There was one that was 12 frames a second versus 24 frames a second. Google it or YouTube it if you don't know what that means. Mm. Um, but, you know, it was all of these contrasting ideas, which was about honouring past, present and future. And um, especially in the time that we live in now with COVID, um, you know, which has put a big ass strain on how we do things now. Yeah, you know? it's changed everything. You know, like tikanga and stuff. Mm. So, yeah, that whole piece was an homage, homage to all of those things and more mm. and um yeah, yeah it was it was cool and it it sparked more creativity more creativity in me and like there's heaps like this is a random as tangent but if you know you know <laughs> um Kanye West I was listening to one of his albums the other day or a couple of weeks ago and I was just like man this fella you know, if you think about his albums and how super, super different they all are, he just went, oh, I want to make this album like this and I want to have this song that doesn't sound like what people expect of me and I'm just going to do it because I want to do it, you know? Mm. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's cool. Mm. And that's what I want to do moving forward because there's all of these pieces that I want to create that if nobody who already knows my work knew about it, they wouldn't know that I did it, mm. you know, because some of them I want them to be like super abstract, conceptual as opposed to something that looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, because traditionally my stuff has been stuff that looks nice mm. um, and has a good meaning too. But, you know, basically it's the aesthetic yeah. is why people are drawn to what I create. But I want to just flip the script. Yeah, you know, just do other creative things, just... Because um, you want to. Because I want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've been inspired by a few other artists who are who have done that and who are doing that. And I'm just like, man, you know, this is, I've, I've come to realize now that this is one of the things that I'll regret if I don't just go and try all of this random ass creative stuff. Yeah. You know? And that's awesome. And, and just even just thinking about your whole entire process, you know, leading up to that, you know, just really challenging I guess the journey that you've been on with your creativity and, and pouring all of that into this piece, you know, with the significance of, you know, it actually being your tipuna, um, the actual exhibition itself, you know, the people who are in that environment, you know, the king himself being around, his wairua being around, the people there, and then um, also, you know, just the matua of matua's old Sir Derek Lardelli, yep. you know, and I've heard you share it and I've watched that bloody speech so many times where he just sort of like emphasizes um, creatives challenging the dawn. Yeah. And I know that's something that you're probably, it triggers so many mm. different parts of you. And, you know, when I think about it and I think about how he said it, man, there's so much modi and mana in that to inspire you to continue to create. And I, I don't think it was fully directed for creatives. I think it was just for anyone yeah. who was open to hearing that particular message. And mm. so do you want to talk about um, about what that means for you and just how it was to be around um, around those people while you're there? Yeah, yeah. Um, anyone listening, yeah, I highly recommend listening to that speech. It was when he got his, um, I think it was an honorary doctorate, mm. I think, um, and he said, knowledge is finite, creativity is infinite. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a direct quote, but I'm sure he said something like that. And then he said, yeah, um, to creative people out there. And like we've already discussed, creative people aren't just mm -hmm. visually or audio creative people. Um, 
and it's to challenge the dawn. And what that represents for me is um, innovation, um, bringing your own uniqueness to the world. And, you know, that, that goes a bit further when you think about the things that already exist now, you know, um, cultural messages that are circulating, um, cultural significance, and it's your own unique perspective on those things is something that doesn't exist. And knowing that all of the influences that you've had throughout your life are going to shape and funnel your interpretation of all of those things to make something or a new viewing platform for people to see that cultural significance or whatever through you know and um yeah for me really it it, it means um trying at least yeah to materialize all of those creative ideas if if not um at least entertain them entertain you know? the thought eh? you know? when i heard it man i interpreted it in terms of a way of um, when you challenge the dawn, it feels like it's only there for a moment mm. until it becomes something else, until it's gone. You know, so when I think about challenge the dawn, it's like you only got now until then to make something happen. Mm, you know, cool and one. so I see it in that sense of like there's a sense of urgency to to bring your value to the world yes. or bring yourself or show up and be unapologetic about it in that regard. And his influence, I guess, is just extreme within Te Ao Māori and within the art space. Mm. And I think for you to sort of like um, go down to Pōneke uh, to sort of be in his presence, but also, you know, in Kingi to Heitia and, and around all of the other artists is perhaps a big... Um, motivator and inspirational sort of trigger for you as you sort of like come back and get into the mahi that you're about to get into yeah yeah for sure and just so um everyone knows the, the significance of sir derek he's um he's a big reason that tamoko is where it is now um you know uh, among other other people mm -hmm. but he's yeah he's been a real um Pivotal. Yeah, pivotal, played a pivotal role in Reviving. revitalizing um, Moko and even just, um, how would you say it, nurturing Māori artists, you know, through Toi Hokura um, out in Gisborne. But yeah, and just the, just the way he talks and, you know, the things that he says, they're just... You know, amazing. To Pretty me. much the Maori Naval. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, like he he reminds me of like Tony Robbins yeah. in terms of his um, presence. Yeah. You know? Wow. We are just like wow. That follows the man. <laughs> you know, where you just feel a, a sense of responsibility to to make the most of these gifts. You know, mm. and you know, like you say too, it's time is fleeting. So. Um, you can't wait until your twilight years to give Do something, your, you know, to give your creativity to the world. I think when you just have the energy, when you have the drive, it's there. There is that sense of obligation. I believe, you know, that if you know that there is something in you that you need to express, whether it comes in the form of entrepreneurship, whether it comes in the form of being in a loving relationship, whatever that is, mm. there's there's a desire that is burning inside of you, and I feel. We have the opportunity as like the human species to be able to do something with that. Yeah. And so that's where I think that challenge the dawn, um, you know, kōrero, that saying is like so empowering for so mm -hmm. many. And moving into sort of like, you know, there's been a lot of things, how you said, cultural significance, and there's been a lot of... Um, there's been a lot of, I guess, voices being shared around, you know, Māori and, you know, racism here mm. in Aotearoa and all of those kinds of things that are happening, as I'm sure they are happening all over the world. But mm. for Aotearoa, for New Zealand to feel like it's not happening here, 
um, I think we need to start being aware that, hey, it is happening. And mm. you know what Rawri and the Māori Party are doing and um, what a lot of people are doing is, is really having their voice being heard and really standing up to mm. to those nasty things that are being said. So do you yeah. have any whakaro around that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, like, just want to send a big mihi to him and um, Debbie Ngāri Wapaka for what they're doing for our people, you know, at at Parliament and, um, yeah, no, they're, they're doing amazing. Like, every single time I hear about what they're doing, you know, it makes me more and more proud to, to be Māori, you know, which is a big message that they're about. And, um, yeah, I think this is good, you know, because we can't expect change to happen if things don't get addressed, eh? yep. you know, and um, I think that this is all people too, this is all people, um, if we try to be open-minded and empathetic about the lives that we live and, you know, although things may not directly affect us, it doesn't mean that it affects other people mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean it's all good to say, like, ah, get over it. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I, I really believe that just having that empathy for our fellow human, mm. um, you know, we can we can go a long way. And it's, you know, although it gets pretty ugly sometimes, um, uh, I believe anyway, um, good's going to come out of it. I believe so too. And I reckon it's awesome that, you know, things are being surfaced and then, you know, it makes people aware and it triggers that sort of like part of, hey, that's actually not nice, you yep. know. And I feel a lot of people are now um, standing up in terms of how Rawiri says it, you know, tangata tiriti. You know, there are people who aren't necessarily Māori or don't have any indigenous background to the whenua you know, they are starting to actually sort of have a voice too, which is just so awesome yep. to see. And so big mihia to the Māori Party and uh, the whānau who are out there um, who are really just bringing things to light and challenging um, what's been happening. So yeah. I think, you know, also ho, I remember us having a conversation, I think it must have been either the start of this year, you know, you're the reason why I became vegan, you know, and there was a part of you that was just like, nah, stuff it. You know, I really am passionate about the space now. And mm. for a long time, you didn't necessarily have, uh, I guess, you didn't feel like you wanted to share too much of your opinion on certain things mm. surrounding the lifestyle. Yeah. But now you've come to a point where it's like, nah, I feel like I really want to talk about these things now. Mm. Um, perhaps, you know, you can sort of like share where you're at in terms of um, the vegan lifestyle that you're yeah. living and, and where that sort of like pulled you into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, there was a point where anything that was confronting, mm. um, which was pro-vegan and, you know, against eating meat or, you know, animal products, I wouldn't share it or, you know, I wouldn't, even though I wanted to, you know, because for me, at that time, I was like, oh, like I don't want to turn away any um, of my supporters, you know, any people who love the creativity journey of mine but don't really care too much about the vegan mm-hmm. part of my journey. You know, so really it was just about worrying more about what people will think, you know, and, and then I had gotten to a point where I was just like, nah, nah. Freaking kids, you know, <laughs> like this is me. These are things that I care about, you know. And it's, you know, it's what you do. You mm-hmm. know, you share all the things that you care deeply about, whether people will like it or not. Yeah. You know, and for me, that's one of the things that, like, out of all the things that I do, like creativity and, you know, proud to be um, tuhoi, you know, proud to be Maori, and all of these different things. The thing that I'm most proud of is. Um, being vegan Mm. and the reason i'm most proud of that above all of the other things is because it's the most selfless thing Mm. you know and it's not me trying to sound like like oh yeah i'm I'm selfless i'm cool (laughs) you know (laughs) it's because it's about other beings other than me you know other Mm. than just me and 
for me it's like frack you know if i would have if i was a cow like frack i'd rather just die you mm. know like i wouldn't want to live a cow's life or you know a, a pig's life or a chicken's life in the it, current environment in the world that we live in now mm. you know free range or not mm. you know like free range cool yeah we live out in the grazing fields at some places not all places but still, I get killed when you want to eat me. Mm. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, sharing more of those confronting things for me. Cause, and the reason, another reason too I didn't share things was because I didn't want to be a vegan basher. Because mm. those are people that I, I didn't like before I was vegan. Yeah, It's just like, oh, it was annoying, mm. <laughs> you know? And then trying to inspire. And um, I've, you know, reflecting now again on my journey it was a combination of being inspired to go vegan as well as being confronted with the realities of not being vegan. Mm. So, um, yeah. And it's not just going full out. Um, going hard. You know, yeah. Be vegan, be vegan, be vegan. You're an egg if you ain't. You know, yeah. But it's sharing things that I feel compelled to, to share, share you and know, being, or, or to speak on. Yeah. Being free enough to be able to share that, right? Yeah. And yeah, I, similar you know i think you know the way that i made my transition was through your influence of just being mm. you know and then that's rain true for me in terms of you know i didn't want to be someone who just wanted to be too confronting you know because i guess the majority of people that are around us the majority mm. of the world don't aren't necessarily open to the full version of of the vegan lifestyle and what it fully means. Yep. Like people have a surface understanding, but not necessarily the deeper reasons beneath it. Yeah. And so, you know, for me, it's, you know, haven't necessarily come around to the space that you're in. And I share and share, but it's not necessarily of like, you yeah, being too in people's faces because I feel there's a lot of aroha for people regardless of their food choices. And it's just about... Yeah having the information there ready and then perhaps and again come to the point of my journey where it's just like okay now it's time to utilize this platform and the voice for um for this particular space because to me bro it's you know i always fantasize about smacking back a big mac or yeah. you know like eating a kai that's not vegan like i fantasize about it but i know i would never yeah. be able to do it because you know? of what has to happen for you to yeah, have that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's just understanding the full impact mm. of that. And for something just to satisfy my taste buds, it's just not enough reason mm. for that. And so it's, um, I think, yeah, we'll be continuing to have our conversations around it and, and trying to find – I think it's important that we find the right language. Mm. I think it's important that we find the right language that, that sits well for – I guess the people who support us for the mm. people who follow our journeys it's it's what's the language can we use that resonates with them as opposed to just being like oh if you eat this all of these are, are being slaughtered and killed you know yeah. like it's there's a better way I feel to communicate things and to I, different people eh? yeah to yeah. different people and um, you know because I always get hit up all the time from you know vegan movements to sort of share something but it's just a space that I don't feel i want to be fully in yet you mm. know because i need to find the language of of how i want to communicate it from the right place yeah as opposed to just saying boom you know because that that way of communicating is already being shared yeah there's different ways and it's just putting the time and effort into just forming what that looks like and yeah. haven't necessarily arrived to that but it doesn't mean to say that um, I'm not going to continue to live yeah, the lifestyle. Exactly. And, um, you know, we've had many a conversation about this, about the way we communicate veganism and, um, you know, understanding who we were before we were vegan mm -hmm. and thinking about the sort of communication methods and the sort of messaging that worked for us, you know. And um, I think this is a, a good opportunity to talk about how people want other people to change, even if it's for a good reason, like, you know, for me, for us, you know, veganism. You know, we believe that it's a good thing um, for, you know, on a global scale. But um, I think one thing that a lot of people don't like to think about is um, 
you know, the changes that they want other people to make and the way they communicate to those people is not the method that would even work for them. For them, you yeah. Know? So how could they possibly think that it would work for somebody else? Mm -hmm. And then also thinking that it's easy to change. It's easy to let go of all of these um, conveniences and, you know, the lifestyle that we have right now for this other thing that's just way different that'll mm -hmm. take a little bit more effort um you know I, i don't think people think about you know that part and i think that's you know with both of us anyway where i think a lot of our empathy comes from is understanding that um if they really wanted to and if things had worked out for them the way they had worked out for you and the order that they worked out for you mm -hmm. They'd be vegan too, or you know, they'd yeah. be pro whatever you're for. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, yeah, and and you know, for us too, understanding that where our strengths are, mm -hmm. what areas and aspects of what we do feed us, and you know, not wanting to just spend ourselves in and just have nothing left yeah for the rest of the things in our lives you mm. know and the rest of the people in our lives and that's an important i feel um way of viewing things is communicate in a way that you would like to sort of like be communicated to and you know a big part of that i feel is um even when it comes into sort of having that influence on people is it's the same sort of thing as like, how would you like to be spoken to? Mm -hmm. You know, and I always think about, you know, when I was closed minded or when I was in, in my room, I remember talking to you, I was like, I had so many out of a viewpoints of why I was close to veganism, you know? And I remember you just used to look at me and be like, okay, you know, but I realized now just how closed I was to that. Mm. And I think the only difference that really enabled me to just at least dabble in it was just a little bit of openness. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and really. I feel and I feel that's just what is missing. And and if people are just close to just being confined into what they're doing, then hey, I'm not here to sort of like open anything for anyone. But that's another thing that I had to come to a point in my journey on is you know, you can't help someone who, who feels like they don't need the help. Yeah. And I think that's where the ugliness and the challenge actually happens for both sides. Mm. And so it's just about, hey, I'm just going to continue to do the mahi, try and cultivate what the language is of people inspired. You know, there are other things that are sort of like um, supporting people on their journey. And mm. so it's just about, hey, doing what we can for what we know and where we're at. Oh, exactly that. You know, and... This is a sort of another tangent, but kind of related. And, you know, it's about, um, what is it? It was this thing that Nipsey Hussle said, and it was from a book he read or something. But it was about um, pretty much like a basic means of living. I can't even remember. Like, if you know, you know, like if you're listening. <laughs> but I'll try and say it. But it was about um, having basic needs, you know, for living, and then having all of these other um, needs above them that weren't as much of a priority as these basic needs mm. and let's say veganism veganism would be you know it's not a basic need it's one of these things that's up here which right. if you think about it in another way it's, it's a privilege mm. to be able to have the option of being vegan you know but if these basic needs ain't getting met you can't even fathom thinking about all of these other things that are above it wow. because you're, you know, you're trying to be warm Just too trying to be sheltered yeah trying to have water and basic food you know that sort of thing so you know that's another thing to um that has helped um shape the way that i communicate um you know veganism and help shape um my view of people mm. you know just thinking like Rick, maybe they just had a point in their life where it's just although that thing is important like it's not important to them right now yeah You know, it's like, frack, I've got other shit to deal with, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and, you know, honestly, I, I'm just glad that we've just opened up the dialogue again because we have conversations and we have our own thoughts, but we haven't necessarily nutted out it, mm. talked about it in, in this way. And it's, I think it's just very important even just for people to to see and, and listen to this part of the journey of veganism as, 
as we know what it means for us and it's just mm. about you know people might not have the same meaning but you know we enjoy it regardless and hopefully through our journeys that people just start to become interested and hey mm. when they're interested those are my favorite conversations and so when people are genuinely like open to having a proper conversation around everything then yeah. man that's where it's at and so you know, it's been been an awesome podcast, though. Hey. Yeah, harder. Holy heck! What a journey! What a journey! <laughs> <laughs> around, around. <laughs> well, started off as just the catch up, but was just um, you know, good to sort of you know throw this out there for you, and mm-hmm. you know, just to be able to share our conversation and our catch up uh, with the planting seeds, Fano, and um, just stoked to sort of see where you're at in the mm. stage and you know doing your whole water journey with f45 Fakatane and you know doing what you're doing you know you and your darling doing very well you back into this creative space and enjoying it and um, i'm looking forward to just seeing how things sort of like play out for you over the coming months and um, just love you heaps takuha love you too <laughs> Ooh, let's go let's go <laughs>